Hi, and welcome back to the Biomechanics of the Musculoskeletal System course. I'm Dan Bassett, and in this unit, we're going to continue our discussion on gait analysis. As you know, in the previous unit, we went through uh, some of the theory and background behind what we call gait analysis today, but when it comes down to it, we didn't really get into how to do it. And the reason for this actually is quite simple. There's not necessarily one standard way to do gait analysis. So we're not going to tell you this is how you do it because it largely depends on which uh, hospital you work in, which clinic you work in, which uh, researcher to follow. There are a lot of options out there. So we're not going to try to tell you the correct way. Our purpose right now is to show you some tools so that you could then apply them to whatever method you choose. Now, a graph is a graph. So you can have graph and that graph could be made up of some standard deviation lines and then you have your subject perform a motion that is more or less like the standard deviation lines and you see some differences compared to them. This is a very standard method. There's nothing actually wrong with this. However, we already presented this in Visual 3D Basics. We're not trying to continually do the same things. You should already have the tools necessary to do this kind of thing, where that ends up becoming a very subjective comparison between various graphs or between a, a certain plot and normative data, looking at the consistency of, well, consistency graphs. Those are fine tools and we highly advise you to explore them further as that's, that's really a good direction to be going. However, there are some other tools that you might be interested in as well. Of course, specific values are certainly of interest. So what we're going to talk about today though is based on Maria Grazia Benedetti's work at the Istituto Ortopedico Rizzoli. That probably sounds familiar to you because this is the same orthopedic hospital that the IOR model was developed by Alberto Leardini and Maria Grazia Benedetti. So it's actually from the same group and you can see Leardini is a co-author on this paper as well. This is a particularly interesting paper that is very practical because it doesn't just come up with a method to manage your data. It gives some very detailed, as you can see here, a very detailed list of gait analysis parameters. To say the least, this is an overwhelming list if you are new to gait analysis. And from my experience, all the labs that perform gait analysis that I've ever worked with use some of these parameters, if any, but I've never seen any actually use all of them. The reason is actually quite simple. This is a lot of information and not all of it is particularly interesting regarding all populations. That doesn't mean that any particular parameter is necessarily more important or less relevant. It's just labs tend to pick and choose, largely because if a medical doctor gets a list of parameters, even compared to a healthy population, that's this long, you end up basically just ignoring all of it. It just takes too much time to go through. So typically labs pick and choose a handful of these that are particularly relevant to 
the studies that they are performing. That doesn't stop you from using all of them, but it's very uncommon, if not unheard of, for a lab to actually use all of them in every report. But what is particularly interesting is to consider what these look like. Let's take, for example, hip flexion extension angles. You can see here we have six different parameters that are calculated for hip flexion angles, H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6, where H1 is that flexion at heel strike, and H2 is the maximum flexion in the loading response, which in other words is also the maximum flexion during the stance phase. We have the maximum extension or minimum flexion. We have the hip flexion at toe off, the maximum flexion during the swing phase and the full range of motion during a gait cycle. So this is an example of what we would be focusing on. Of course, what we're trying to do in this course is not just tell you about this, it's to show you how you would go about that. And for the most part, you already have the tools coming from the Expert Builder series, but we want to make sure that these are very clear to you. So we're going to go through only on the sagittal plane. We're not going to go through all of the sagittal plane, um, on the kinematics, and show you how to reason through all of these parameters. So go on to the next chapter as we start doing that.